Now, the Big Bang deal with the big issues here mm -hmm. on Weekend Breakfast. More evidence <laughs> is accruing to confirm this theory of how our universe was created with the detection of some very curious things called neutrinos. Mm. To talk us through just how this discovery has been made and what it's telling us is Dr Carl and astrophysicist Professor Garanch Lewis. The big peg is that there was nothing, or probably not, and then it was really hot and it cooled down and here we are. Along the way there were uh, atoms with electrons formed at 380,000 years. After the Big Bang, yes. And stars around 400 million. Uh, yes, in the first few million years. But we're going way back to the first three minutes. Absolutely. Over to you, Professor. So, the, the very start of the universe, the Big Bang, was a very hot, dense environment. And um, it was made up of the fundamental bits and pieces of the universe. So, the protons and neutrons that we now find in atoms were just all bouncing around. They were bouncing around with radiation, photons bouncing around, and there were electrons there as well. And all part of this soup were these other fundamental particles known as neutrinos. And neutrinos are rather mysterious particles. They're quite ghostly. They're mm. very hard to detect. And we have trillions and trillions of them flowing through us right now from the sun. But they interact so weakly that most of them just pass through straight through us, straight to the Earth, and out the other side. So tricky to actually get oh, to the yeah. bottom of this neutrino business. Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, they were, they were first uh, sort of um, hypothesized is the right word, back in the 1930s as missing energy in radioactive decay. It took another 20 years for people to actually start to detect them. We now have these rather massive detectors that detect one or two events per day from trillions and trillions and trillions of neutrinos flowing through the, um, through the detectors. And as an example of how hard they are to stop, if you want to stop X-rays, you know, you need a couple of centimetres of lead. Mm -hmm. Neutrinos, a light year. Yes. So it's, they're real, they, they, they just flood through us, they don't see us, we're like ghosts to them. And um, what has happened is, as Carl said, the universe has expanded and cooled down and that the atoms formed us and stars. The radiation that was bouncing around, which was gamma rays back then, is still around today and this is the cosmic microwave background radiation, which we have special satellites that observe us on the sky, Planck was uh, one of the most recent ones. And by studying the cosmic microwave background, we can actually see the ripples in matter that form the galaxies today. Now, the other piece of this puzzle are the neutrinos, right? The neutrinos are bouncing around as well, and we'd expect them to be around today. And similarly, like the radiation, it's gone from being exceedingly hot to very, very cool. And we can't detect them directly. So they are, they are so so feeble that none of our detectors pick up these leftover neutrinos. So the big question is, how correct is our picture of the Big Bang? We mm. expect those neutrinos to be there, and can we find a signature of them in, uh, in any of our observations? You mean we expect from our hypothesis, from our theories, yes. and we have found that the universe is ex expanding, which Absolutely. is one piece of evidence, that 90% of the atoms in the universe are hydrogen, 10% helium, and we're just sort of rounding errors. Absolutely. And also the background radiation has a temperature of 2.7, so there are three lines of evidence, and you're talking about a fourth line of evidence. Yes, so we would expect this um, neutrino radiation to also be around in the universe, but it would be even colder than the, the, um, the cosmic microwave background. What these recent observations have done is they've looked at the structure that we can see drawn on the cosmic microwave background. So we see this pattern, and part of the signature of that pattern is the presence of neutrinos in the early universe. So by studying the details of the pattern, um, you can see a very slight altering of the pattern due to the presence of three different kinds of neutrinos, which is precisely what we expect from our standard model. So we've been able to establish at least three different types. That's, that's right, that we have at, at least three. There's, there's a lot of um, ideas that there might be more, and people are searching for evidence that there might be neutrinos that interact even less with matter, because these could then be dark matter, this mysterious Ooh, substance that's out there, there in go. the universe. Yes. So everybody's hunting around for dark matter. Um, but we, we've established that there were neutrinos in the early, early universe, they were hot and they did play their part, and they must be around today, they must be in this room today. Every, you know, every handful has these neutrinos there, but they're so feeble that we can't detect them directly. Do we understand how they are affecting what's going on around us? Well, today they don't have much effect unless you're an exploding star. Okay. So when a star explodes, a supernova, uh, it produces an extraordinary number of neutrinos and there's just so many of them and the, the star is so dense that they actually help tear the star apart. But for the majority of the universe, neutrinos are just these ghostly friends that we have that are just zipping around doing their own thing.
So wow. much more to discover there. But very exciting because we are still talking theory here, aren't we, with Big Bang? Yet this is more evidence indicating that that is, in fact, how things began. It, it's... Um Science is all about gathering evidence and putting together the picture that this evidence is pointing to. So the evidence is pointing to the fact that the universe used to be denser, it used to be hotter, and if you keep winding that backwards, we were born in a hot Big Bang. It's very hard to come up with an idea that gives you the same imprint on the universe today without having this hot, fiery birth at some point in our past. Have we ever um, had a point where there's something that actually points against the Big Bang? Oh. So there are, um, there are people who, is, I mean, it's not universally accepted, but it's a vast majority of science uh, has this uh, notion that the universe was born in a fiery Big Bang. Th this isn't where the battleground of cosmology really is anymore. It's more to do with how the universe is today, what is dark matter, what is dark energy, and also where did the universe come from? Mm. So we had a hot Big Bang, right? this evolution to today, this is what all the evidence is pointed to, but we still can't push back and ask the question, where did the universe come from? So as Carl mentioned, it's like it could have exploded from nothing, which not many people actually think is the case, or that we somehow budded off some, some previous universe or something. But until we have um, uh, theories where we can uh, actually understand this really dense, hot material where gravity was really strong. This is this unified theory that everyone's looking for. We have this wall that we cannot look further back through. But from that point forward, the hot Big Bang expanded universe, that appears to be the universe in which we live. All mm. right, still so many questions <laughs> to Absolutely. explore. Jurek right, Lewis and Dr. Carl Krujanewski, thank you very much both for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Greg. Oh, it's dazzling with science. It is. The neutrinos. And it's also dazzling with sport. Absolutely, because Nick joins us now <laughs> and you are still...